Hi everyone, my name is Lindsay Jennings and I'm a new administrator for Artichoke Dance Company and I'm so excited to be here. Recently I got to sit down with two of the company members, Liz and Aiden, and have a conversation about their experiences of dancing during the pandemic. We talk about what they've been up to, what Artichoke Dance Company has been up to during these months, and what they found most challenging of being a dancer during the pandemic. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you enjoy. I just have a few questions just about continuing to stay dancing during the pandemic. My first is, can you just both like give me a rundown? What have you been doing to stay in practice and like what dance things in terms of dance have you been doing during the pandemic? I have been taking a lot of classes over Zoom, um, lots of ballet classes and sort of using this time to try to find like new classes that I wouldn't usually have to take in person. So that's been kind of fun. Um, I'm also very sick of Zoom and it's it's uh, kind of challenging to stay focused for even like an hour for a ballet class. I think I get to the center and I'm like, oh, I don't know, I'm like, look at my phone or, um, but I've been trying to do that as well as doing like cross training stuff. So um, doing like Pilates classes and yoga classes, biking. Um, I don't know. That's about it for me. <laughs> yeah, I have not been as active as I would like to be, to be perfectly honest. Um, Artichoke was, was rehearsing you know, up until our show last month, last month, this month, and what is time, yeah. but, um, you know, so that was a nice way to at least be moving, you know, at minimum, like a couple, like once or twice a week. And uh, I do, I've been trying to make it to this one dance class uh, that is over Zoom that a friend teaches. Um, so that's been like a really nice way to, you know, see someone that I like dancing with and miss dancing with and uh besides that you know just trying to not doing as much dance but just trying to generally stay active uh, doing a lot of uh, like road and mountain biking and uh, some yoga classes that kind of thing nice. and, and uh and then just stretching always trying to stay stretching <laughs> Aiden, you just kind of touched on this, but could you give me more, both of you, a rundown on what Artichoke has been doing, perhaps like more on what was happening during the rehearsal process? Yeah, so we, you know, had plans to do some shows this summer and that did not happen, <laughs> you know, uh, in terms of like traveling and that kind of thing for obvious reasons. And so the sort of group work shifted to, you know, we had to take what is normally a, a company that does a lot of partnering and that kind of thing to working individually uh, in our living rooms mostly. And so, you know, we were rehearsing over Zoom and, you know, trying to make a piece that not only was social distanced, but incorporated social distancing as like a theme so we were working in a sort of like cir circular perimeter of six feet, um, like a six foot radius to, you know, <laughs> use that idea of, uh, of the social distancing as kind of like a, a core mechanic. And so, you know, each of us, when we, when we finally assembled it in person, um, you know, each of us having like a sort of six foot circle that then like bounded us separate from each other. And so, yeah, so it was a combination of rehearsing, you know, at home in living rooms, which, you know, I have a decently sized living room and it is not big enough for a dance rehearsal, <laughs> I learned. Um, You're also very tall, so. Cool, so. It, right, also that. So kicking over a lot of uh, cats and plants and stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, but, uh, you know, then did some did some assembling of, of the piece in person, you know, uh, outdoor, outdoors and parks, that kind of thing. And so I performed, uh, performed last month in the Lower East Side uh, as a fundraiser for Dixon Place and then in uh, a park in Red Hook for uh, commemorating Hurricane Sandy. 
Um, I was also involved in the performances at Dixon Place um, in that piece. And then previous to that, um, pre-pandemic, Lynn was working on a duet with Nate and I, another member of the company, um, that we were going to be performing down in Florida at a museum, and clearly that didn't happen. So um, we sort of, I'm forgetting exactly when that performance was supposed to happen, but I think it was pretty early on the pandemic, so we were kind of waiting if we were going to go, we weren't going to go, uh, but we basically ended up taking um, the material that we had worked on in person, which was a lot of partnering, so a lot of it really shifted, but um, we ended up working over Zoom and we created um, this duet in our hallways in our apartment. So when um, uh, when it was the Zoom was recorded, it showed um, sort of like one wall between us and it looks as if we're kind of falling into the wall and away from the wall, like into each other and away from each other. Um, so that was a really fun process to be a part of because it, I mean, it was also in the very beginning of quarantine so it felt very timely to be sort of trying to figure out how to take this big choreography that we had made in person which was you know partnering and then really condensing it into a very very narrow space um, in our homes so uh, we spent I think a month or so working that way and then we ended up recording uh, meet, we ended up meeting at different times during the day and recording the piece um, many times. We found that the speed of the internet and the kind of the time lapse between myself and Nate and Lynn was always different depending on if we recorded it at seven in the morning or we did like 2 p.m. in the afternoon and we did one at 8 p.m. at night. Uh, so sort of looking at the differences in that way too. Um, so during those Zoom rehearsals and those processes, what was your greatest challenge besides kicking over your cats? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think one of the biggest challenges for, for me, um, yeah, I think the space and I think, so, so trying to take the movement and condensing it into a living room space or the hallway space, but then still um, trying to make things as big as possible because I think that for myself, I realize I have a tendency if when I'm when I am dancing in my living room or in a smaller space, I have a tendency to sort of mark things or make things smaller, but yet you can still have, have the same, you know, amount of expression and focus even within this um, smaller physical space. So I've been trying to figure out it was a challenge to sort of try to first realize that I maybe wasn't really fully engaging with the same physicality and then trying to sort of um, battle with that and keep that as like a practice and rehearsals. Um, and I think also just everyone is tired, Zoom, we're Zoomed out. <laughs> so uh, just trying to sort of stay focused on Zoom for me has been a challenge as well. Yeah, it's, um, space is the obvious one of, yeah. you know, New York City apartments are not built to be studios. <laughs> um, so that, of course, um, the video was hard, but not in the way I expected it to me, um, in the sense, you know, Liz already alluded to, you know, everyone being sick of being on video. And I think there's just not the same stamina, like no one wants to be in a like three hour video call for a rehearsal or, or, or anything else for that matter, <laughs> um, which we do in person all the time. So that was, that, that was part of it, but you know, also just like kind of mechanically, there were um, some things that surprised me, which is that, you know, when you have uh, the, the video of other people on your screen, it's small and it's only in one place. So trying to do group work, you, you don't get like peripheral vision of people. You can't like follow people really. Cause like there's, they only exist in a little square this big, like over here. So you really had to be much more, um, it, it felt like much more individual, mm -hmm. uh, but not, a, not in a good way. <laughs> um, 
so so that was hard and then also you know Liz alluded to like kind of time lag like we were trying to do things synchronized to music and by the time the you know the the like music traveled from Lynn who was in Michigan uh for part of the time you know traveled to me I could hear it and move and then my video would you know go back over those copper wires to Liz and she'd see it and then like her video come back to me none of those things were in sync right and so I think we all just kind of realized the limitations of like physics here right (laughs) I was, I was going to say, I think in those scenarios too, it was challenging for me to also <laughs> to figure out if like it was actually a time lapse or if we just weren't together and you never right. really know or like maybe we're just like not dancing together. Or maybe like we're not together because of the time lapse and it's sort of like, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, That's funny. I'm thinking more broadly um, about like how Zoom classes have become a thing or how in the dance world, like people are now um, live streaming their performances or like Liz, how you touched on like being able to take class with people that you wouldn't normally get to take class with out of those like broader ideas. What's something that you think is like a delightful surprise that's come out of dancing during the pandemic? Yeah, I mean, something I touched this before but uh being able to take class with any any teacher that has been putting things on zoom or or instagram uh has been really exciting to me even if it is in this different um context and i've for a long time really wanted to just try different ways of moving and different styles and you know i've been able to like take a hip-hop class and take a heels class you know just try things that are really really um kind of outside of my comfort zone that i wouldn't necessarily have had the time or put the time in to go do in person right. um clearly i would rather do those things in person but um it's been a nice way to sort of engage in a different way um lower the barrier to entry it sounds like yeah yeah barrier to entry definitely um, and I guess uh, I've done with with Lynn and then with a few other choreographers too, I've been working over the summer and I've done a lot of like shooting uh, dance and then it's been presented in a live stream or presented in a video. And it has been exciting to see how many people really tuned in to watch um, because I think that people are really craving this, uh, you know, being able to see art and see movement and uh so I think it it was fun to get to share uh work in that way with people who I know probably wouldn't you know they're not based in New York they wouldn't have been able to come see a performance or they're usually busy and wouldn't necessarily take an hour out of their day to or have the time to like watch something online um yeah um you know I think Liz has taken advantage of more of the of those kind of benefits that I have, I, I, I get them in theory. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, you know, I just have not been taking advantage of classes as much and that kind of thing, uh, which I w- wish I wish I did. It's also uh, hard. It's also hard to. I mean, I feel that. Yeah, it's like it's there, but yeah. also sometimes I just like don't want to. Right. Yeah. Um, it, it's a little bit of a tangent, but. Um, you know, outside of the like professional dance world, I think it's kind of been a normalizing um, kind of outcome where, you know, kind of the rise of like TikTok, for example, has has, like happened at the same time. And, uh, you know, one of my favorite groups on there, like three guys that they call themselves like the basement gang. And it's like these three guys that I assume are roommates or something. And they just like make up these like very funny dances, like in their basement, like wearing tube socks, <laughs> you know, just like, right. you know, but now that is as, you know, kind of on the same level as like a professional dance company who's also like putting videos out um, on whatever. And that's their only way to connect. So you know, in, in a way, it, it, you know, to that, to that lowering of the barrier to entry thing. Right. 
has kind of like in the, in the same way it brings it to other people right that's so interesting i know that i know those three on tiktok they're really funny and then my last question um again like thinking about these like broader things that have come up or like systems that have been created inside of the dance world inside of a pandemic what are your hopes in the near or far future as we trans transition out of a pandemic in the near or far future what are your hopes of things that we can let go of or the things that like will continue on i guess keeping along the lines of the lowering the bird entry you know like dance performance like is a hard thing to make work economically and if you have people like rehearsing over video or performances just from like you know videos in your apartment and that kind of thing um it, it does lower the lower that barrier and like lower lower the costs and make it accessible to more people potentially and that kind of thing so in the same way kind of taking taking advantage of any limitations as a you know and, and and kind of leveraging them right of like well like you know people like going in person but like video video does work too or you know i i hope that like when we have vaccines and people can meet safely again i i actually expect like people to that that craving that's like built up to you know see things in person i hope that's but we're not going to like take that for granted right yeah anyway. yeah i totally agree with that and i um i've been having this conversation with some people i'm close to about um like vr and how there's now these like travis scott did that did his concert in vr and like gaming there's um I'm not a gamer, but I, some people <laughs> are, like are really, really into the gaming scene. And, you know, it's like you, you, you meet with your friends when you're playing games and you talk. And uh, so these kind of like virtual experiences, um, specifically like thinking like virtual concerts and um, that to me personally feels so like, ugh, because I, I like, I want people to go in person and like be experiencing, um, you know, this experience with people around them and getting things from performers. And, um, but I think there is a whole group of people that maybe, I don't know, like really, really gravitate towards those virtual concerts and experiences. And I think that pandemic has made that more of a, um, I don't know, it's just a different way to engage. Um, but I've been having this debate with people around me if, um, if that group of the group of people who are going to go to those virtual concerts, like if those people are then going to see, um, you know, a real concert or a dance performance or a show and they're like, Oh, well, I don't have to go to that. Cause I can just watch it yeah. from my living room. Um, and I'm not quite sure where I land on that, but I also agree with Aiden. I hope that once the pandemic is things are more under control and they're, hopefully it's a vaccine that I think that there really, really will be this resurgence of people like wanting to go out and see like performance in person and being with a group of people and watching something. And um, another thing I'm a part of is um, this group called Create Art. And we basically partner with venues around the city and put on performances. And we've been doing shows at the Ace Hotel in partnership with um, the Breslin restaurants. And people are sitting outside socially distanced um, at tables. And then we've been doing performances where um, dancers are like dancing on a carpet in front of the hotel or they're dancing like in windows. And it's been really exciting to see cause this is on um, Broadway and like 29th street. So there is like a bike lane and there's always during those performances there's all these people who just kind of like stop in the street and it's this huge crew of people just like watching. And it's been really fun to like see um, you know, see their faces and see that like people really do like want to watch and they are excited to see like a live performance. And uh, so that's been, I don't know, that's giving me some joy to like, as I'm sitting there doing the music cues, you know, to see all the people kind of stop and watch and be like, what is this? What's happening? And it, I don't know, it just fills me with joy that that's still like something that we all value as a society. Right. Um, and I hope more of that. Yeah. 
that's, I think, something that has helped me that even though, like, access has been better with these virtual performances, that I'm, like, we'll never be able to replace, like, what live performance is, like, nothing can do that, so. Yeah. Anyway. Definitely built, growing that appreciation for people, yeah. Right, yeah. Um, just, just to build, build, build on what Liz said, so I've been, like, uh, volunteering with the open streets near me, so, um, you know, where they, they shut down the street to traffic on weekends and restaurants go out in the street and things like that. Um, there's limitations uh, because of the pandemic, you know, they aren't, they aren't like given any permits for live entertainment or, and things like that. But, you know, that has drawn like you know, people just like sitting outside and like putting out picnic blankets on the concrete even, you know, it's like people are like loving that like civics, that, uh, uh, like using that civic space um and so i'm excited for like on the other side of this that you know the city will m kind of make more like outdoor performances possible which you know is our chunks bread and butter and so yeah. I'm, I'm excited for us to you know kind of be like get a lot of those kinds of gigs you know and, and kind of perform and you know, out in the world more uh, on the other side of this so that, that people seem to really like it even even with the limitations in place. So, you know, without those limitations and the streets still being open uh, to pedestrians, like, you know, I think it'll be really, really fun to see what happens with performing arts in those spaces. That is exciting to think about. Um, those are all my questions that I have for you. So thank you very much and have a wonderful Thursday. Thanks. Good talking to you. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Good seeing you.